schedule a free design consultation, and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Good evening. A gunshot rang out early this morning after RCMP were trying to apprehend suspects wanted a connection with a break and enter at a liquor store. A spike belt was deployed at the intersection of Highway 16 and 40th Avenue in order to stop one of the two trucks involved. That's also when an officer's gun was discharged. It's not known if it was directed at the suspects. The first vehicle was recovered outside the city limits. A 20-year-old man from Lloydminster and a 29-year-old Onion Lake man have been arrested. The second vehicle was not found. It's described as a stolen dark gray 1993 Chevrolet CK2500 with a GMC grill and a chrome side panel. The back windows of the truck also has a white tape in a Union Jack design. It was last seen heading north on 75th Avenue past 67th Street. If you have any information on the robbery, you're asked to call Lloydminster RCMP at 780-808-8400 or Crime Stoppers. And a man accused of robbing eight banks in just two months is on the run. The RCMP are asking for the public's help identifying their suspect. He's seen here entering a bank in Lethbridge, Alberta. The alleged serial robber has held up several banks in the province as well as in Saskatchewan and B.C. In each case, he's accused of pulling out a weapon and then fleeing on foot with the cash. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Well, the time you'll need to wait to deal with minor problems will be reduced in 2015. $30,000 in the budget was allocated to provide peace officer training to current bylaw officers. General Manager of Public Safety Doug Rodwell explained to Council Monday that the training, what the training will accomplish. Part of our main plan is to ensure that we deal with um, these issues at a, at a lower level so that we can ensure that our RCMP constables are dealing with the uh, more significant issues in the community. Police efficiency was a main topic at the budget meeting back in December. Council also approved $305,000 to hire support staff for the RCMP. With a peace officer promotion, Rodwell is confident the public will see improved service. The enhanced authorities, for example, the, uh, the Dangerous Dogs Act, the um, Animal Protection Act, they'll have some authorities under the Traffic Safety Act, for example, um, vehicles abandoned on the side of the roadway. Um, currently right now, mm -hmm. um, there's some time lag in dealing with those issues. This will allow them to deal with those issues immediately. Part of the budget and money will also go towards updating uniforms and marking patrol cars to meet provincial standards. The East Coast is experiencing one of the worst blizzards in recorded history. In New York, the subway has been closed and residents have been advised to stay indoors. Well, here in Lloyd Minster, a heavy amount of snow would not be quite as devastating, but there are plenty of other reasons why the city reviews its disastrous social services plan every year. Jeremy Thompson has more. You're probably prepared for household emergencies, a smoke detector in case of a fire, flashlights, candles, maybe some preserved food in case of a power outage. But what do you do if the emergency is citywide? I'm here with Emergency Management Coordinator Ann Danielson to find out. First of all, Ann, what constitutes a citywide emergency? So a citywide emergency is something that, well, either it affects a large area of the city or the entire city. Basically, it's something that exceeds the day-to-day -day capacity of households to respond or of first responders if they need a little extra support. The city has ranked emergency scenarios that may require action in a list of most to least dangerous. Number four on the list, severe thunderstorms, may seem out of place, but the ranking takes into account what happened in the past, what's likely to happen in the future, and how vulnerable Lloydminster is to the incident. So what do you do if something like that happens? Prepare an emergency kit um, so that you're ready. You can grab it and go out your door with it. Um, secondly, ahead of time, decide where you could stay if something happened to your house or something you couldn't stay in your neighborhood. Do you have family and friends around? Service Sports Center is one of two major reception centers that can provide food, shelter, and first aid, among other things, if needed. There's mental health services, so obviously emergencies can be quite stressful, uh, so we want to make sure that people's emotional needs are taken care of. If a disaster happens, the city's website is updated, radio stations broadcast warnings, and an automated system sends out alerts to those who've signed up to get them. Unfortunately, in a city of over 30,000 people, a mere 566 have signed up for the emergency alert program. Councillor Larry Sauer would like to see that change. But maybe it's just something that people, you know, natural disaster, is that going to happen here? Chances are it's not, hopefully not, but 
but it is there, and it would be great if people uh, uh, became informed and did subscribe to that. If you'd like to sign up for the alerts, you can go to the city's website, lloydminster.ca, and click on emergency alert. From there, you can choose if you'd like to receive a phone call, text message, or email notification, so you can be prepared if disaster strikes. Jeremy Thompson, NewCap News.